What is going on everybody? Today I will be continuing to cover the win totals for 2024 college football teams and today we will be covering the ACC. We will cover all the win totals for the ACC teams and I will give my predictions on if I think they will go over or under on their win totals. The ACC is oddly going to have 17 teams next season with the additions of California, Stanford, and SMU so those teams definitely bring a lot of unpredictability to the table but I'm going to try my best to predict the 2024 win totals for the ACC teams. But before we get into the video, let me remind you guys to like the video and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then you will love this channel because we upload daily college football content and we basically cover everything on this channel. So definitely consider subscribing and also consider joining my Discord server down in the description below. But without further ado, let's get into the video. We are going to start off at the bottom of the list with the teams with the lowest win totals. And the first team is Stanford and their win total is set at 3.5. Stanford has the lowest win total in the ACC, and they are the only team with a win total this low. But it does make sense because they have a pretty tough schedule, and I expect them to be a pretty bad team. Stanford is a team that could be better in like 3-5 to five years. Troy Taylor has done a decent job in recruiting, but they definitely won't be good next season, and there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. The only lock win on their schedule is probably against Cal Poly, and then the only other games I would give them a realistic chance to win are the games against Syracuse, Wake Forest, and San Jose State. But I really don't see them winning four games on the schedule next season. I definitely have to take the under 3.5 for Stanford. The next team is Virginia and their win total is at 4.5. They are a very interesting team to me. They did a very good job in the transfer portal. And they brought in the leading receiver from Notre Dame, Chris Tyree. And they also brought in two other solid receivers. They brought in three players to help out in the secondary as well. And they are top five in the country for returning production. I know they went 3-9 last season, but they actually played in five one-possession games. They could be a team that possibly shocks a lot of people, but they do have some tough games on the schedule. I could see them starting 3-2 and two because their first five games are pretty manageable, but then they would have to win two more games, and I don't see them winning five games on the schedule. If this over was at 3.5, I would probably bet the over, but since it is at 4.5, I am going to take the under 4.5 for Virginia. I do think Virginia will be better next season, but they will not make a bowl game, and they will still have a lot of work to do. The next team is Wake Forest, and their win total is at 4.5. Wake Forest is top 15 for returning production on defense. On the offensive side, they lost three of their top four receivers, and last season, the offense really struggled. Last season was the first losing record for Coach Dave Clawson at Wake Forest since 2015. There's a lot of question marks on this team, and their win total is very hard to predict because their schedule has some winnable games on it, but they also aren't a great team. But if Wake Forest does not slip up, they could very well win five games against North Carolina A&T, Virginia, Stanford, UConn, and the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. If they win those five games, they would be going over four and a half. I think they could potentially pull off an upset against a team like California, Duke, or North Carolina if they do slip up in one of those easy games. I'm very 50-50 on this win total, but I think I am going to take the over four and a half for Wake Forest. Last season, Wake Forest went four and eight, and I think this team has a realistic shot to compete for a bull berth next season. So I am taking the over four and a half. But similar to Virginia and Stanford, there's still a lot of work that needs to be done for this program. The next team is Boston College and their win total is set pretty low at 4.5. The coaching staff is going to be a lot different, definitely with new head coach Urban Meyer taking over this Boston College team. This Boston College team returns a decent amount of production, especially on the offensive side. And I know they had a bunch of coaching changes, but I am a bit confused on why their win total is set this low at 4.5. I feel like it should be set higher. They might not win 7 games or even make a bowl game next season, but I really don't expect this team to win any less than 5 games, so I am taking the over 4.5 for Boston College. The next team is Georgia Tech, and their win total is at 5.5. Georgia Tech returns one of the top ACC quarterbacks, Haynes King. Brent Key had a decent amount of success in year 1 with Haynes King, and he has this Georgia Tech team heading in the right direction, and they ended the season with a 7-6 record. That was Georgia Tech's first winning season since 2018. The offense was really good last season, and they are top 7 in returning production on the offensive side. The defensive coaching staff was revamped with the new hire of former Duke coordinator. A trustless Georgia Tech team, and they are a sleeper team heading into next season. They aren't the only sleeper team of the ACC, but I think a win total of 5.5 is setting the bar a bit too low. Because in my opinion, I think it is too low, and their schedule isn't actually brutal, but I still think they will find a way to go over 5.5. They should beat Georgia State, Syracuse, and VMI. And then Duke and North Carolina could very well be wins. They could definitely beat a team like NC State or Miami as well. I definitely think Georgia Tech goes over 5.5 wins, even with the tough schedule. So give me the over 5.5 for Georgia Tech. The next team is Pitt, and their win total is at 5.5. Their offense was a big concern last year, but they brought in many key additions on the offensive side from the transfer portal. 
They picked up former Alabama quarterback Eli Holston and two solid receivers, and they also returned key players on the offensive side. They had the worst offense in the ACC last season, and they only finished with the 3-9 record, so I don't know if they will be good enough to make a bowl game in 2024. I think there is potential, but I am going to take the under 5.5 for Pitt, but I was definitely very split on this decision. I would not be surprised to see Pitt make a bowl game because their defense should be decent again. The next team is California, and their win total is at 6.5. California is top 15 in the country for returning production, and they returned one of the best running backs in the country, Jaden Ott. California will also return Mendoza at quarterback, and he could battle with the new addition, Chandler Rogers, at the quarterback position. California has a top 5 ACC transfer portal class, and they have brought in a bunch of players who will see the field. They brought in two 4-star receivers, a 4-star running back, a 4-star cornerback, and a 4-star linebacker. I think California has the resources to potentially be an 8 or 9 win team. And having Jaden Ott back is huge for this California team. We'll see how big of an impact the transfer portal players make, but this program is definitely heading in the right direction. They only play three ranked teams on the schedule, and it's not a very hard schedule. So I am definitely taking the over 6.5 for California. This is definitely another potential sleeper ACC team in my opinion. The next team is Duke, and their win total is at 6.5. I'm really unsure about this Duke team. They lost Mike Elko and a bunch of the coaching staff. They also lost Riley Leonard at quarterback. They lost their running back. They lost big players on the offensive line, and they lost a bunch of talent on defense. Manny Diaz will have to keep this team heading in the right direction, but Malik Murphy brings a big what-if to the table, because if he can carry this team and be a top 5 or even a top 3 quarterback, then he can really help set the tone for this team. I do not think the defense will go from being really good to bad in one year, so the defensive advantage is there, but Malik Murphy has to stay healthy and play really good football if this team wants to win 8 games again. I could see this team making a bowl game, but I don't think they will be as good as they were last season. I think they will take a bit of a step down, so I am taking the under 6.5 for Duke. The next team is Syracuse, and their win total is at 6.5. Syracuse won 6 games last season, and they are top 10 in return in production. But they also brought in Kyle McCord at the quarterback position. He's a guy that gets overlooked because the standard is set very high at Ohio State. But he was a third-team All-American Big Ten quarterback, and he could definitely be one of the top quarterbacks of the ACC. Definitely since the pressure will be a bit off of him at Syracuse. He's not a great quarterback, but he is solid. And I think he could definitely get the job done for Syracuse. Syracuse ended the season with a 45 to nothing loss in their bowl game. And it is hard to predict any success for Syracuse after that bowl game performance. But I think Syracuse will bounce back next season and they will be ready to go. I'm kind of split on the win total for the Syracuse team. But they return a lot of talent and they brought in Kyle McCord at quarterback. So I am going to take the over 6.5 for Syracuse because the schedule is very easy. The next team is SMU and their win total is at 7.5. This is another team with a very easy schedule. Last season they won 11 games, but 2024 will be more difficult competition for SMU. But I think if Preston Stone is back by the time next season starts, this team could make a lot of noise in the ACC. Preston Stone is a very good quarterback and I think he should be back. The defense showed massive improvement last season and SMU could fit in perfectly in the ACC conference. I think they will drop some games because the competition is going to be tough. But the schedule is very easy and the only ranked ACC teams that they play are Louisville and Florida State. And I like Preston Stone to carry this team to a 7 or 8 win season. Maybe 9 wins if everything clicks. But I am going to take the over 7.5 for SMU. I would not be surprised to see SMU go under because the games against BYU, TCU, and California are going to be difficult. And I know Boston College beat SMU last season. But SMU didn't have Preston Stone in that bowl game. So I do think SMU should beat Boston College. The game at Duke is also questionable. But they could drop a few games and still win out because like I said, the schedule isn't too difficult. So I have to take the over 7.5 for SMU. The next team is Virginia Tech and their win total is at 7.5. I think Virginia Tech could honestly be a team that ends up playing for the ACC championship if they do put everything together. Virginia Tech went 6-3 in their last 9 games last season and Kyron Jones took over and became the leader at quarterback for this team. Virginia Tech returns 86 of production which is actually first in the whole country. They ended the season with a pretty dominant statement win against Tulane. California and Georgia Tech are sleeper teams, but Virginia Tech is a big sleeper team, and I would not be surprised to see them make the ACC championship, because the ACC is really open, the schedule is favorable, and I could see Virginia Tech winning 9 or more games with that schedule. I am definitely taking the over 7.5 for Virginia Tech, and I am really high on this team. The next team is Louisville, and their win total is at 8.5. Louisville is top 10 for returning production on defense, and they have done a very good job in the transfer portal, and they rank 2nd in the ACC transfer portal rankings. The defense will be good again, but we need to see more from the offense, specifically at the quarterback spot. I felt like Louisville kind of snuck their way into the conference championship game last season. They beat NC State before NC State was playing their best football. They beat Duke without Riley Leonard, 
and their conference schedule was very favorable. I am not saying they didn't belong in the ACC championship game, but they did not have a difficult conference schedule path to get there. And they also lost to Kentucky and then only scored 6 points in the ACC championship game. I think the ACC will be a lot more competitive next season. So all I'm saying is we need to see a lot more from the offense. They brought in a veteran at the quarterback position, Tyler Shuck. I believe this will either be his 7th or 8th season of college football. But he's very injury prone so that's a big question mark. This is just my opinion but I feel like a lot of people are overrating this Louisville team heading into 2024. But I was surprised with their win total only being at 8.5. So maybe I'm not the only one who isn't very high in Louisville. I'm very split on this win total, but I think Louisville is a good team. I see them barely going over 8.5 with that schedule. I just don't see Louisville making the ACC championship again, and I think there's a couple teams with more upside than Louisville in the ACC. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's just my opinion, and we will see if Louisville can prove me wrong next season. The next team is NC State, and their win total is at 8.5. NC State has a very favorable schedule, and I think this is definitely a 9 or 10 win team. The only ranked teams they play are Tennessee out of conference and Clemson on the conference schedule. And even if they lose those two games, I think they could win just about every game. They could drop one more game and be 9-3, and three, but regardless, I think it is safe to take the over 8.5 for NC State. They finished the season pretty good winning their last five regular season games. And I do think Grayson McCall was a very good pickup at quarterback. NC State also brought in a four-star receiver from Ohio State, a four-star running back from Duke, and a four-star tight end from UConn. And those are three big additions on the offensive side. They have some holes to fill on defense, more specifically at the linebacker spot with Peyton Wilson leaving. And Peyton Wilson was the best player on the defensive side for NC State. But on the offensive side, I like Grayson McCall and I expect this team to be good. And the schedule is very easy, so give me the over 8.5 for NC State. The offensive talent is going to be really good for NC State. Definitely with their top receiver returning on top of the new receivers that they are bringing in. The receiving talent will be there and Grayson McCall should get the job done. So I am taking the over. The next team is North Carolina and their win total is at 8.5. North Carolina only won 8 games last season and they rank 127th in the country for returning production. And they have some big question marks heading into next season. They brought in Max Johnson at the quarterback position and I think he is a solid pickup. But losing Drake May will really hurt. And Max Johnson has some big shoes to fill. The big upside that this team has is that they will be returning Amarion Hampton at the running back position. And he's one of the top running backs in the country. And they have some solid receivers returning as well. But they don't have a lot of positives heading into next season. But they have to have the easiest schedule I have ever seen. The only ranked teams they play are Florida State and NC State. And then every other game they might be favorites in. But I'm not very high in North Carolina. I think playing at Minnesota could be tough. I think they could definitely lose to Georgia Tech. At Duke is tough as well. And honestly I would not be surprised to see them lose a game to Virginia or Boston College on the road. Despite the easy schedule, I am taking the under 8.5 for North Carolina. I'm just not very high on this team. The next team is Clemson and their win total is at 9.5. After the season ended, I was actually really high on Clemson heading into 2024. And I actually was thinking they were my favorite to win the ACC next season. But as the offseason moves along, I gain more questions about Clemson and I'm starting to lean more towards other ACC teams. Dabo Sweeney has refused to use the transfer portal time and time again. And Cade Klubnik still has a lot more work to do at the quarterback position. I do think Clemson will be a good team, but the schedule is very difficult, and I do not see them winning 10 games, so I am actually taking the under 9.5 for Clemson, at least for now. The next team is Miami, and their win total is at 9.5. I think Miami has all the talent in the world to compete for an ACC championship, and I think they finally found a quarterback who has a lot of upside, and Cam Ward was a quarterback that played pretty good for a Washington State team that had a terrible offensive line. So imagine if Cam Ward can get an offensive line to block for him, so he's not always running out of the pocket. I really think Cam Ward has potential to be a top 5 quarterback in college football. And I'm not joking. His ceiling is really high. Everybody could talk down about Mario Cristobal and this Miami team, but they still have been improving slowly and progress is progress. They went 5-7 and seven in 2022 and last season they actually won 7 games. Next season could be that next step up. I'm talking 9 or 10 win season and maybe an ACC championship win. And I think a win total of 9.5 is very realistic for Miami. They only have two ranked teams on the schedule. But in my eyes, the schedule is pretty difficult despite only playing two ranked teams. I could see them losing to Virginia Tech or on the road against California. The games against Florida and on the road against South Florida are also tougher games as well. They also play at Louisville and against Florida State at home. And then Duke and at Georgia Tech are very tough games. At Syracuse, it's a potential trap game to end the season. I think Miami will take a step up next season. But I do think there's way too many potential losses on the schedule to predict the over from Miami. So I am actually going to take the under 9.5 for Miami, but I'm still very high on this team. The last team is Florida State, and their win total is at 
And right now, I think I am leaning towards Florida State winning the ACC. I think Mike Norvell is a great leader, and I think DJ Uyungle is a very underrated quarterback addition for Florida State. And Mike Norvell did a pretty good job with Jordan Travis, and I expect the same with DJ. Florida State has the number one transfer portal class, and they're going to be very good again despite the talent they lost. I have to take the over 9.5 for Florida State, and they could honestly be the only ACC team to win 10 regular season games. The only game on the schedule that they won't be favorites in is probably on the road against Notre Dame. Their schedule is pretty difficult, but I really trust Florida State to go over. So I am taking the over 9.5 for Florida State. The ACC title race will definitely be interesting to see, and it's very wide open. But anyways, that's going to do it for the video. You guys let me know down in the comments below which team you think I am sleeping on, and tell me why. But let me remind you guys to like the video, and also subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. And if you guys love college football, then you will love this channel because we upload daily college football content, and we basically cover everything on this channel, so definitely consider subscribing. And also consider joining my Discord server down in the description below. But that's going to do it guys, and peace out.